Dispenser going up. Well, I guess that'll do. Hey, back again with another internet video, and it's been a little over a year since I posted that other video where I talk about three engineer weapon ideas that I had floating around, and I thought it was a pretty fun video to make, so I thought why not do a little bit more spitballing today and throw some more ideas out there. So yeah, the footage you'll see in the background is just there for substance. I'm mostly just going to be explaining my ideas and why I think they'd make some interesting additions to the engineer arsenal. Now, I do want to mention beforehand, though, I personally don't think that TF2 really needs more unlockable weapons added to this game. I think that we should try and balance the ones that we have in the game already before we go and do something like adding more of them anytime soon, but Valve already had said that they're going to be adding new weapons for the Pyro and the Heavy in the future anyway, so there's that. And speaking of the Heavy, make sure you guys stick around until the end because I have a very special announcement regarding the Heavy Weapons idea that I proposed in the last Weapons Concept video. Anyway, the first weapon idea I had is probably the most basic one I got for you today. It's what I'm going to call call the Colt 737. Now, this is a secondary weapon replacement for the engineer, and it is a modified Colt handgun style pistol. And when I say modified, I mean this pistol has a literal pair of miniature jet engines attached to the sides of the gun itself. The engineer has gone a little nuts with this mod on this one, so, uh, but it's for a good reason. As we can tell by looking at the stats here, the main positive upside for the Colt 737 is that when you press and hold Alt Fire button, or right click for most people, uh, the jet engines activate, and then the engineer is propelled forward, making his max speed go up to 130%, which is around the same speed as the Scout. Now, these jet engines don't run on jet fuel. They actually consume the metal reserve that the engineer usually uses to build his buildings, and you spend around 10 metal per second for as long as you hold down the alt fire, and as long as you have fuel, you can just run right through their connector like a speed demon. The major downside, other than not being able to use the speed boost mechanic unless you have enough metal to spend on it, is the pistol's damage itself is very weak. It has a whopping 70% damage penalty, which makes this thing a pretty horrible option for putting out damage. However, I do think that an option for the engineer to be faster gives him more viability in fast-paced game modes like 5CP or King of the Hill. It would be a great addition to the engineer because I've always felt, as a support class, engineer has always been the one who kind of lags behind, always late to the party when it comes to actually doing anything on maps like Process or Gully Wash, because by the time he gets around to putting his teleporter up or a dispenser, that point's already been captain your team has already moved on to the next point with different spawns and uh, the lower cost for the teleporter introduced in meet your match has helped a bit with that issue on 5 CP maps but I feel like compared to the medic at least who has a constant higher speed than most classes the engineer just doesn't do a good enough job on what is becoming one of the more popular game modes especially since the competitive mode was released recently so overall the Colt 747 would be primarily used for three main purposes the major one being the engineer rollout on 5 CP and King of the Hill maps, giving him the ability to get his buildings up where they belong faster. It would also be used to escape from sticky situations and force engineers to make game sense based decisions like should I spend my metal on a sentry gun to continue defending or should I spend my metal on getting to the next point faster to set up. And then the last thing that the Colt 737 would probably be used for is closing the distance between your enemy and yourself in order to make battle engineer a little more effective. This would encourage engineers who are focusing on combat to use their metal to get close enough to be effective with shotgun range instead of just spamming down another doomed mini sentry. So I personally think that while this weapon is pretty simplistic, I think it could change a lot about the engineer metagame and tack on another completely new playstyle. And the next weapon concept I have for you today is a little bit more complicated than the last one, probably the most interesting weapon idea I've come up with, but also has the potential of being the most controversial, but you guys can tell me what you think about it. I've decided to call this one the Bloodhound Rifle, and that name will make a little bit more sense once you learn what this thing is capable of. This is a primary weapon that replaces the shotgun for the engineer, and it's only upside is how the projectiles it fires work. The bolt that the Bloodhound fires, which are around the same size and travel at the same speed as the bolts fired from the Rescue Ranger, are tiny tracking devices that can latch on to enemies and stay there for a predetermined amount of time or until they are manually removed. So while this attachment is on a player, that person is outlined with a team colored glow that can be seen through walls by every player on the server, including enemies and teammates. Now the major downsides are as follows. The 
projectiles only do 40 damage, so this is not a weapon that can be used for combat. This is a team support oriented gun. In addition to that, the rifle can only fire one bolt at a time before it has to be reloaded, similar to how the sniper rifle works. This way the projectile can't be spammed like crazy. And compared to the shotgun, this weapon has very little maximum ammo capacity with only eight rounds available in the reserve. Now, being able to track someone is a pretty powerful ability, so we'll go a bit more into the rest of the abilities and limitations of the tracking device itself. The attachment can be manually removed in one hit by anything that would normally destroy a sapper, so an engineer's melee weapon, for instance, or a pyro's homewrecker, or the neon annihilator. But even if there are none of those classes around, the tracking device will automatically fall off after 10 seconds. Also, the most important part is that you can only attach one tracking device to one player at a time, so once you tag someone, the weapon then becomes unfireable. I was actually thinking that what could happen is when the tracking device is actively attached to someone, the engineer would put away the rifle and take out a very small radar powered monitor that is mainly there for cosmetics but also displays an arrow that points towards where the person being tracked is relative to the engineer's location. Once the tracking device is destroyed or falls off, the rifle is then taken out again and can be fired normally. So basically the entire point of this weapon is to give the engineer an option to give up his own personal firepower in order to act as a support role that is much more specific. He can aim his tracking device at players that he wants his team to focus down. He can track the spy that's been harassing his buildings. He can tag the medic that's about to use uber charge into his nest, and he can try and hit the sniper from across the map to make his own team sniper have the upper hand in their little sniper duel that they're having. So the possibilities are endless for how useful this weapon can be, and while I do think that a wall hack ability could be pretty irritating to play against, I also think that the options that are stacked against it, like having it be weak to weapons that damage buildings, is enough to give the enemy team an answer to this weapon. Not to mention, with the engineer not having access to his shotgun, it would leave all of the actual tracking up to his teammates, so having a coordinated team is a requirement for this weapon to be even slightly effective. And moving on to the last weapon idea I have for you guys today, which is also my personal favorite concept, is a dispenser backpack, which I am calling the Portable Provision Support System, aka the P2S2. Now this works exactly how you'd expect a dispenser backpack to work, it's a dispenser that you wear on your back like a backpack. <laughs> This would be a secondary replacement, giving up the engineer's pistol in exchange for the ability to do exactly what he's always wanted to do and transform himself into a half-man, half-dispenser. However, there are differences between dispensers that we've all come to know and love compared to the one that the engineer would be wearing on his back. The P2S2 would heal players and dispense ammo and metal at 50% of the rate of a regular level 1 dispenser, so that would mean it would heal at a rate of 5 health per second, dispense 10% ammo per second, and 20 metal generated every 5 seconds. The backpack also affects the engineer himself so he can constantly have a reliable healing source as well as constant ammo and metal regeneration. The dispenser also has a range that is double what a normal dispenser would have, although even that isn't very much. It would just make it so that people don't have to stand inside of the engineer in order to get healed by his backpack. And all of the major downsides are pretty simple, but they are enough to offset the advantage of being a mobile dispenser. The biggest one being that the engineer, since he is hauling a dispenser on his back at all times, constantly moves at 90% speed, which is how fast he regularly moves when carrying a building. And because he already has a dispenser on his back, the engineer is not able to build another one if he has the P2S2 equipped. And the last downside, in order to make sure the survivability of the mobile dispenser isn't too overpowered, the engineer can only be healed by all sources, medics, health packs, and dispensers, including the one that's on his back at a 50% healing penalty. This way, the constant regeneration that the engineer gets from his own dispenser is cut in half even further, making him regain only 2.5 heal points per second. It'll also prevent medics from tanking the engineer too heavily to create an extremely powerful combo that can't be killed because of how difficult it is to kill the moving dispenser that they always have running around them. Now, the main reason I think this weapon is important is because the engineer, in pubs at least, is a thankless job that not a lot of people notice or support. And in order for an engineer to be successful, he needs his team to stay near him and protect him while he builds his nest. So what more reason to stay next to your fellow engineer than the fact that he is a walking, talking source of health and ammo? I think that this could be an interesting combination with weapons like the Widowmaker, because you can build up ammo in your dispenser, and then go on a shooting spree that doesn't really require you to be the greatest shot. In general, it could make combat engineers more bulky if used in combination with the Gunslinger, but the speed penalty would mean that they would have to be more defensive than offensive. Overall, the portable provision support system is something that could add more of a teamwork aspect to the average engineer's life, and give him the option of encouraging more team support if he finds himself in a server with teammates who refuse to notice him. So those are the three weapon ideas I 
I had for y'all today. If you liked any of them, let me know. If you think they're too gimmicky or overpowered, just share your thoughts. And as usual, if you have an awesome weapon idea, I'd love to hear it. I always get a kick out of the weapon idea spitballing that the community participates in from time to time, even though we all know deep down inside that it's very unlikely that these ideas would ever get added to the game for real. Or could they? The Community Workshop is a place for people to throw in their own designs, and that's exactly what a few very talented and dedicated creatives have done with an idea that I proposed in my last weapon concepts video. If you remember the video from a little over a year ago, I proposed a weapon idea that wasn't an engineer weapon at all, but it was intended to be used in conjunction with NG's, the ammo reserve for the heavy weapons guy. Now this was basically a sandwich that gave people ammo, a literal box of bullets that the heavy would take out and use to stock back up on. It also had the option of being thrown to grant full ammo or metal to any friendly players, more specifically engineers. Well, the ammo reserve is a real weapon now, yes. It was fully modeled and is now available on the community workshop. It also comes with a custom animation of the heavy using it, placing it on the ground and loading up on more bullets. As for the stats, those are completely up to Valve, but instead of explaining exactly what we think it should do here, you can go and check out the king of weapon demonstrations on YouTube, Karma Charger, show off the newly improved stat propositions over on his channel, as well as a more in-depth look at what the the ammo reserve looks like and how it functions. So if you want to see the ammo reserve in Team Fortress 2, just follow the link in the description to the workshop page and click on the little yes button underneath the section that asks, would you like to see this item officially accepted and supported in Team Fortress 2? I know I would. I do. If this weapon gets enough recognition on the workshop, it is very likely that Valve will possibly include it in the upcoming Heavy Weapons Guy class update that was hinted at during the Heavy vs. Pyro event. So I'm excited to see if we could possibly make the ammo reserve a reality, and I hope you are too, and that you'll vote for it if you truly are. In the meantime, keep thinking up more of those creative ideas and publicly discussing them, and thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you nieces and nephews next time. Bye-bye.